from here this morning. I don't know how your weather is, but mine, I'm a, I think we're about to get a big storm. So I'm hoping I'll, I'll make it through this with no problems. Um, I'm going to just give you a little um, overview of what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, and often I, I launch into things and lately people have been telling me you need a little bit of an overview to orient people as what you're going to be talking about. So I think I'm going to do that first. By the way, uh, you know, I've been in the Census Bureau for about uh, 23, 24 years. I have actually stopped counting. Um, I've been through a couple, uh, actually three of the, the 10 year censuses. But uh, a number of years ago, I transitioned from working in the regional office as a geographer and uh, moved out uh, cover, doing uh, presentations. And so this is some a service we uh, provide uh, for free. And I do cover um, most of New York State, not Long Island and uh, Northern New Jersey. And so under normal circumstances, I actually come out and give uh, presentations uh, you know, live or in the flesh, I'll say. So, um, so what I'm going to do today is really uh, talk about who we are at the Census Bureau very quickly. That's a 30 second uh, slide and then talk about uh, decennial, which we've just been through the 2020 census and American Community Survey. We call that ACS. Uh, explain just a little bit about how we collect data for the ACS. And then what are the parameters that you need to find data? What do you need to sort of put in as your filters? Uh, I, and then I'm also going to give a demo a couple times uh, on the data portal, and hopefully you'll pick up on that a little bit. Um, and then I do really want to show you the ACS website because that is some for some people that's an easier way to find the data. And then just sort of at the end, any questions or if you want me to go back and look at something or or if we want to try it ourselves, so we can do that. Um, okay, so let's talk about what we do at the Census Bureau. We are a contractor to other federal agencies. And uh, we, we go out and we have people knocking on doors all the time or they're visiting town halls or village halls and doctor's offices and hospitals trying to gather data. So as you can see, we gather data for HUD. Uh, right now we're doing a special uh, survey called Housing Vacancy Survey. That's for New York City. They actually pay us to do that do things for the Department of Labor, a lot of things for the CDC. And when our census takers come out, they, they have a special census badge. But the ones for the CDC, they actually have two badges, a CDC badge and a census badge at the same time. Uh, and then we also do this thing called the American Community Survey down here at the bottom. And this is our biggest survey, as a matter of fact. And that is actually conducted by us. That is not something we send off to another federal agency. So many of these things, we are contractors. We collect the data for them. We turn over that data to those agencies, and then they release it on their website on their websites as they see fit uh, to do so. So, uh, let me just move forward. Let's talk about this this uh, 2020 census or decennial census, as we call it in house. Um, it is something we do every 10 years. We've just come through that. Uh, it is called the official count of the population. We do visit every household. Um, anybody who doesn't respond rather we send a um a form out to them and hope that hopefully they will respond on the paper form or online if they don't we visit the household uh we ask uh, 10 basic questions and uh we we do have to account for every housing unit so we whether it's vacant or not we do have to visit that um so the decennial census, it, it also included homeless people, believe it or not, that's the only time really we count homeless people. Uh, we do visit group quarters, which are, are like university dorms and, and um, parish houses and things of that sort and count people who live, live together in groups. Um, this is the first time we did this census online um, and you could do it on your phone. Um, so that was kind of an interesting thing, but I think it really helped things during this pandemic a lot. Uh, all the other censuses we do, like American Community Survey, uh, we do population estimates, as, as a matter of fact, every year. Um, and other things that we do are all based on this 10-year count. So this is sort of like our, our inventory every 10 years. And then everything else we do, which is sampling, is based on this, I'll call it a baseline, OK? The data is available down to a block level. And a much of that is because of redistricting and um, that redistricting uh, this year is going to be late, uh, or this uh, census, and it will be 
I believe the end of September when it is based, it, it will be released um, to the public. And the apparatus that we're going to look at today or the portal is the same place that people will go to to find that um, redistricting information down to the block level. So keep that in mind. Um, this decennial census had a lot of intense publicity surrounding it and a lot of temporary workers who understand, you know, what they're doing in their lane, um, but not necessarily the bigger picture sometimes. So uh, if you encountered somebody who, who understood what they're doing, that's great, but they may not have uh, had, had the bigger, um, broader picture of what the Census Bureau is doing. So, um, so this is uh, part oh, of the broader David, picture. David, yeah. you just yeah. had one quick question when you were talking yeah. about blocks. Someone said, is it a the census block or a city block? It's a census block. And so okay. a census block uh, could be slightly different. Uh, we have them out in the middle of nowhere, out in the country. I shouldn't say the middle of nowhere, but you know, it could be a huge area, right? It's something that closes off on itself. It could be if you had a very wide a highway like the the New York Thruway. Sometimes, when you come to a clover leaf, I'll, I will call it those things in the middle of the clover leaves are are also given a block number. Uh, we you know we do things like that because you just never know where somebody's going to build a house. I mean, it sounds kind of silly, but uh, stranger things have happened. So uh, that's why we we do that. So it's wall to wall numbering of things that look pretty much like a city block. But sometimes it's a, a little bit more than a city block, and it is wall to wall, from um, coast to coast to coast. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, American Community Survey. It is a moving picture, so we are doing this every month of every year, and we did not stop because of the decennial census. And so some people were actually receiving the American Community Survey form at the same time that they were receiving the 10 year census. So that's a, a little confusing, but we, we try to elaborate and explain. Um, it is an impartial uh, address selection. So we don't know if people really live there or if they don't live there, but we are obligated to unearth that information. Okay. Um, it's sample count. We do about 1% of the population or 1% of housing stock every year. Um, and we just like the 10 year census, you you're going to get a card or a letter beforehand telling you the ACS is coming, trying to explain what it is. And then it comes about a week later. It's a form paper form. And they're saying it will say you can do it online or you can you can do the paper form if you want to. And if you don't get it back that month, the next month, you most likely will get a census taker visiting you. OK, uh, or an ACS census taker and and. So those, we don't actually call them census takers. We call ourselves the field representatives and they would come with a computer that has a decal on it that says Census Bureau. And they, they ask you the questions and put it into a computer. Now look at this, 72 questions. So that's a lot of questions. We're really getting beneath the surface. We're asking you um, the deep characteristics about what is happening in your household. Um, something very interesting about this though, we barely care about your name. Okay, so we are we are looking into statistics, uh, trying to get the data and then turning it into statistics. But this is the one census or survey we don't we don't really care too much about your name. Uh, we, we're asking your name so that if we don't understand something or there's confusion, we can get back to you and we probably ask for your phone number. But ultimately, we are destroying the names off these forms. Uh, and we do have, by the way, some people who participate in the ACS and I have seen the forms and they're just labeled on their person one, person two, person three. They don't even have a name. So, um, you know, we, we prefer to have a name, you know, so if we can't come back to you, but it's not necessary. Um, the tables come out, what we call B tables, ba base, uh, base tables, C collapse tables, S subject tables, and DP data profile tables. And we also have a, a CP table, which is a comparison profile table. We do a lot of cross tabulating. So we ask, um, it might appear that we're asking, you know, question A and question B, but then we're actually coming out with statistic C and D, you know, because we've figured out things by, you know, pulling in data from different questions. So 
uh, that could be that's sort of a surprise to some people. Um, this data is not available down to a tract level or a block level. Instead, it's a tract level, and a tract is something like a neighborhood. Okay, and uh, you can uh, something developed many many years ago. It's like a mini neighborhood around the country, and usually about four thousand people in a tract. It's developed so you can analyze things statistically. Um, Okay, so here we have what looks like the American Community Survey questionnaire. This, this is one or two questions, and I just like to show this. This is always a, a question people have for us. Um, you know, people tend to think that Hispanic is a race, and at the Census Bureau, we do not view it that way. We view Hispanic as an ethnicity. Um, people can fill this up as they want to. They can do the check off on the form, or they can write it in. And so we have software that can read what people write in. Um, and so it, it offers a little bit of flexibility there. Um, so notice that the question about race follows that. And so you could potentially have somebody who might say that they are Puerto Rican and then below, they may say that they are white or they may say that they are black or they may say something else. Maybe they say they're um, you know Chinese or whatever. We, we don't know, there's all sorts of combinations. And so that is, uh, some of the reasoning behind this. So I just want people to um, know this. You sometimes will get this sort of a question. So this I put in here, this is Ancestry. Uh, once again, people can write in whatever they want to write in. But the real reason I show want to show you this question is so that you see it's actually three questions. So it's number 14 is A, B, and C, right? Asking about language. So although I said there are 72 questions in the American Community Survey, there's actually more questions in there. So I just want you to, to know that. All right, so these are the sort of the, the main categories, but not all of them that you can get data for. So right here in the middle, we have what's called the DPO2 table. There is no DPO1 table, so I, and I don't know why. Uh, DPO2, a data profile, that means. So you have all these headings here, but these are just uh, sort of touching the surface. When you look at a data profile table, and I will show you today, it's like a Walmart of tables, okay? You see a lot of information in there about many, many things, but we never get into anything too specifically, okay? And if you wanted to do that, you would take one of these headings, which are usually in the tables, and they are, um, all capitalized letters, and then you could go back to your filters and put in those headings, and you would find a myriad of tables dealing with these topics, okay, different ways we've broken them out. So I want you to notice that we uh, we have information about social characteristics, economic characteristics over here on the left. We do have on the right housing characteristics, so we, we do ask 24 questions about the housing unit and things associated with the housing unit. Um, and then all the rest of the questions are about people living there, right? And then we also have a DPO5 table. I don't have it up here. That is a, a more straightforward table about um, number of people living in a place, their sex, their race. It's just very straightforward. It doesn't really uh, delve too deeply beneath the surface. And it's sort of comparable to uh, decennial sense, the decennial information that you normally would get every 10 years. So. So I just I just don't have that up here, but um, all right, let's talk about data thresholds and the parameters that you need right to find your data. So when we go looking for data today, or if you're ever helping somebody, I want you to keep in mind that there are two strains of data. Okay, so there's what we call the ACS five-year data and the ACS one-year data. ACS five-year data oh, means an another question from your I think okay. your last slide. Um, Mm -hmm. It says DPO5. Is it demographic? Is the D mean de um, demographic? Does that DPO5, yes, uh, is demographic. Yes. Okay, so somebody's looking it up as we're talking. <laughs> yes, it's great. an active crowd here. Yeah, good, good. Um, yes, yeah, so um, anyway, talk about the data thresholds. When you go looking for data, you have to think about how big an area is in population. And the reasoning behind this is we, we don't want to burden the public too much with too much door knocking, right? 
So we have what's called five-year data for low population areas, right? Anything under 65,000 people. And believe it or not, you may have some counties in upstate New York that are under 65,000 people, okay? And if you went looking for data for an area under 65,000, you have to look for five-year data, meaning it is a data, it is data we pulled in data over five years, and then we averaged it, and then we released it to the public every December. So we are releasing that data every year in December, but it is an average from the past five years, okay? If you are fortunate enough to be in an area more than uh, 65,000 people, you now have the option of look, of pulling five-year data. You can still pull a five-year data, but you also can get one-year data. And when you get that one-year data, um, that means that it was just from the previous year, okay? It, it's an average from the previous year. The average was large enough. The sample was large enough, but do not believe, do not um, be tricked into believing that the one-year data, the numbers you look look at will be the same as the five-year because the five-year is the average from five years and the one-year is the average from one year. Okay, just in case you happen to look at both of them for, let's say, the city of Buffalo or something of that sort, they will be different numbers, okay? And notice on the right, the dates of release. Um, so we have December and September. And then over here on the left, I've kind of just put in here you know, what falls into those categories in general, but sometimes things fall into different things. But in general, zip code tabulation areas um, are going to be in the five-year data. And then MCDs, what we call the like towns in upstate New York, typically would be in the five-year, but some of them may be large in population and maybe they'll be in the one-year um, category as well. Some counties will be in five-year, some counties will be in one-year. Uh, census tracts, which are sort of the um, flagship geography at the Census Bureau, they um, they are in the five-year uh, aspect. So, yeah. Another specific question. Mm -hmm. um, explain what one unit attached is. Uh, I'm not sure. That must be in a data set someone's looking at. Okay, is that, um, is that I think that's GPS Leslie. Platform? Leslie, are you looking in a in a a data set right now? I'll wait till she answers and then we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking it's like a an a accessory dwelling unit, but yeah. I'm not. Okay. Well, that's okay. We can get to that when you get to the next pause. I know you have a lot to cover. Yeah. Yeah, and then just just a little thing down here at the bottom, uh, we have this thing called MOEs, margins of error, and you're going to see that today. And so as you go down in populated area, your margins of error are going to get uh, a little bit, they're going to get larger and larger. And, and in fact, that you may get to the point where you're not comfortable with what you're looking at. You say that margin of error looks too large to me, maybe I won't use this data. The other thing I want to say, is margins of error exist because the sample's too small or because people don't answer all the questions on the ACS. And so we will take in ACS data, uh, a form if people, you know, when people answer most of the questions, we're very happy and we take it, but there are people who don't, you know, certainly we're all like that. We don't wanna answer all the questions. So some people may not answer one or two or three, questions and so that changes um, the data intake and the margin of error as well. A little geography lesson here. So we talked about blocks over here in the, the lower right, this red um, sort of uh, geo blob, I'll call it, polygon. That is a census block, right? And then it fits into a block group. And so this is what block groups kind of look like here. All these are streets in here. Um, we do release some data at what we call a block group level, but I do not advise using block group uh, level data unless you're really desperate. Um, sometimes those margins of error are really high, but the block groups nest within a census tract and just a little history, census tracts generally have about 4,000 people in them. That is the um, you know optimum population we need in an area to get a good sample reading for ACS. And so that was done intentionally. And by the way, census tracts are something that were developed back in 1910 in New York City 
um, Federation of Churches came to Census Bureau and said, you need to develop a statistical unit where people can, that's very stable and people can uh, analyze an area over time. The Census Bureau bought into that, and by 1940, they went nation nationwide with the concept, okay? So uh, census tract, census tracts nest within a county, counties nest within a state, states within the United States. So what is missing here? The If we look over here on the left, I've written here other geographies. So notice that census tracts only nest within the county. They don't nest within a zip code tabulation area. They don't nest necessarily nest within a place, um, a minor civil division, congressional district, or school district. So they don't, they're not um, comparable to those, really. However, um, you know, I always like to say in in the Northeast, we you know we pay our high taxes, and we always think we don't get anything back for it. But the one thing we get back for this is we have all these you know towns, right? Town governments, and and when the Census Bureau set up the census tract, they decided back in the '40s they sort of grandfathered in that census tract boundaries would not sever town boundaries. Okay, so if you have a town. Uh, that has 16,000 people in it, you're going to have four census tracts that are contained within that town, okay? You won't have um, something that's half in one town and half in another town. So that's like a little perk we get here in the Northeast. Um, so these sort of nest very nicely, are usually within um, the towns, okay? Sometimes you might get a town, a whole town that's its own single census tract. And a, a few places like in Maine, the pop uh, not Maine, Vermont, population is so low that they've had to put two uh, townships or towns together um, or three that are just one census tract, but they never sever, you know, um, ne never sort of like partially in one town and partially in another. It's always following those township boundaries. So um, over here on the left, when we go look lower left, um, lower left, I have here in New York, in New, New England, county subdivision and that equals cities and towns not villages but cities and towns so if you wanted to get a wall-to-wall -wall look at your county what's going on so we'll just say um uh, whatever county you know i think it's monroe right which is rochester so if you're or maybe even albany county if you were looking at that and you looked at county subdivisions it would give you all the cities and the towns in your county and you could kind of look at it wall to wall and see statistically what is going on. There's a little geography hierarchy. I, I don't think I'm going to talk about this, but uh, just so you know, certain things nest within other things, and that's the way we view it at the Census Bureau, but I, I don't think you need to know this. And this is something I put in here. This is really for um, people who deal with GIS, and they need to know these um, codes when they're matching data up to their um, geo files. And so I don't, I don't know if there's anybody in this group who maybe they're from universities and they deal with students, but it's just, just so you know, we do have something like this and we, we realize geography or GIS people are actually using this, okay? This is what a table will look like, or table number rather, table ID. So once again, um, it always starts with one or two letters, okay? So you can get a B for base or S for subject or DP data profile. You're always going to get that over here. And that's the thing that I look at the most. It kind of gives me an idea what I'm dealing with. If it's a data profile, it's just a big table. It will always have um, percentages in it, you know? So I really like percentages. I have numbers and percentages. Uh, if you get to a base table or subject table, um, it, it will be a it will be a specialized table about one sort of topic, and um, we'll kind of really delve into the subject. But you may not get percentages. Sometimes you're just going to get numbers. Then these two digits here, and it is a little like a an um, like an enigma to me. The system they don't really explain it to us. But this is where you can figure out what deals with what. Okay, and then the, this is like a subcategory over here. And then I always like to draw your attention to the uh, suffix at the end. If you get something with a suffix, it means it's dealing with one race. Okay, it might be Caucasian, it might be uh, African-American, whatever it is. Um, I think we have in there like 
American Indian as a race, that sort of thing. So it is it is a way for you to to search or to understand better what you're looking at, just just so you know. Okay. When I go into uh, data.census.gov today, um, this is our going to be our main portal for looking for data. Um, it was the, 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 a year ago that this was launched. It is still very much uh, in transition. So they're always trying to in, improve on it. Um, a lot of people are um, yearning for the former American fact finder. Um, however, I think in some respects, this has some advantages advantages to it. So you'll see today. But what I like to say is the secret to this is advanced search. So a lot of people would have gone, let me just go back to this window right here. I'm looking for, it's a little bit like Google. You put something in, but you have very little control over what comes back to you, okay? If you come down here to advanced search, you, you begin to have much more control in a way to filter through what you need, okay? So that that is something that you can do. Um, and I, I, you know, I've, I've gone to some other uh, groups and I remember one, someone who's a librarian said, as a librarian, I will always go for the advanced search. And so I said, okay, that sounds good to me. Um, okay, this is, this is sort of my information. And then uh, if you wanna, maybe take a picture or, or you're going to get the information later. But, um, you know, I'm not always there. I could be on vacation, I could get sick. So we do have this other email down here, census.askdata at census.gov. And so we have a few people around the country always monitoring that website uh, or that email account rather, and they're trying to figure out how best to answer your question or to, to get the right person to call you and discuss if you have an issue. I don't say you get something back immediately, it might take a day, um, but this is a, a, a good alternative to um, sending something to me or you send it to both things at the same time if, if you have an issue. And so, you know, after many of my trainings, I do have sort of recurring clients who come back and they say, okay, I need help, come, come help me. So um, let me, we have a couple questions for you. Go. Sure. Is, this, is this a good point? Oh, perfect. Yes. And, and every time you ask a question, it gives me a little break with my voice. So. <laughs> okay. Well, um, one person asked that one person says that um, they were called about an ACS survey this fall for a second vacation home. Not um, they were not residing at that home at that time, and was only asked basic questions. Is that normal for a second home? So you were not asked all like the 72 questions. Was it really ACS? I, it may have been the, the, 20, the 2020 census. Because that you do for every place, right? Second homes. Yeah, and yeah. We, and we do for, okay, ACS, what we do is, I, I think that would have been the 2020 census. But um, the ACS actually we go there if we determine that nobody is living there and we kind of figure that out like oh, it's a vacation Ginny home. says it was definitely ACS. <laughs> oh, okay. And it was and she was in the survey or was it uh, okay, well. Okay, so we what we do is if somebody isn't living there, we are still trying to get answers to some of the questions about the housing unit, the 24 questions. And so we may ask, and I don't, we could ask a neighbor, but often people will do research. They'll go to the town hall. They may go to a library and they'll look up the data and they'll try to figure out who owns a home, how much, you know, what is the mortgage or how many rooms are, in, they'll do as much as they can. And we call that interviewing the unit. And so we are, this is not just a, a survey about people, it is about the housing units as well. Okay. So that's probably what that was. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, I know my husband has used that data for his research. So, uh, and then there's another question, um, and this is a very interesting question. How do, you, how do you deal with a town like Bristol, which is in both Tennessee and Virginia? <laughs> I don't know if you know yeah, the I answer know, I, to that. Yeah, I know I have the answer to that. Oh, well, right. Bristol, yes, Bristol has the center, the main street is right on the state line. 
and but I believe they have two separate governments, um, and and so that's that's helpful. <laughs> but you know, we if it were, I think also Texarkana is somewhat like that. If uh, we had something that's in two different states, we would we would probably post it to the state, and you would see something under it would say something like Bristol, uh, Tennessee part, and then you're going to see um, Bristol, Virginia part, and that's how you would see it in the data. So sometimes you will see things like that, and it's alerting you that there's another part to this somewhere. So when you're you're drilling down. That is what you will see, but we probably would would divide that up. But um, certain some things I'm going to tell you, like a zip code tabulation area or zip codes, there are zip codes that are half in one state and half in another. So you have like Northeastern New Hampshire, you have um, uh, post offices that deliver well into the state of Maine. So that is one zip code and it's in two different states. And so sometimes when you go looking for data, you're going to see, like a zip code area that you have to find it like for the whole, like maybe the whole country and you have to hunt through it. And it's because it's half in one state and half in another. Only recently have we decided we're going to sever up these zip codes and put them in a state file, but that doesn't mean the whole zip code is in your state, you know? So we do have a lot of issues like this. Uh. Yeah. Okay, and then one um, more question for this section. Mm -hmm. What years would the ACS five-year data released in December 2020 cover? Oh, okay. So in 2020, December 2020, the five-year data was for 2019. Okay, so it's almost... Um, so it would be five-year, it would be four. 2014 to 2019 if it's if it's yes. one of those you know, that if, right. yes so yes. it's so basically it's a year lag when the when it's a five-year uh it's a year lag yeah year lag. Mm -hmm. okay yeah and then um lisa then a follow-up question to that is that data set the best place to find poverty data broken down by town village or school district and you may be yes. getting to that later Yes, and we can. You can certainly. Sh I I I did something two two nights ago. It was a GIS uh, thing. Is at night, and I it ended up. I felt like I was I was on Guy Fieri's grocery games or something like that. And they were throwing out problems to me to look up things. But um, we could. But that's why I'm here. We can we can fool around with this a little bit and and look up uh, things if we want to. Any other questions there? Maybe I didn't answer that, but we will look for that. But yes, the, the best thing would be you can do it at a village level if you wanted to. Um, I think that you said poverty, right? Mm -hmm. Different different ways, yeah. If your village population is too small, though, you might not want to do that. Okay. And by the oh, by the way, we are in um, every twenty every ten years. The Census Bureau goes to county governments and they and even local governments and they allow them to change some of the geographies and so and to work with things. And so, for example, um, the next data release will have things what we call census designated places. And those are like hamlets and areas in, in the state that never incorporated like a village, but they look like they should be a village. Right. And so often the county will draw a line around those. They're called a CDP and census designated place. I will tell you, look that up on Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> but that is that is something where you can go and you can get data for um, these little hamlets, right? And so the thing is we do that once every 10 years as a courtesy program. And coming the end of this year, you will be able to get actually more CDP information, more hamlets and things that have been. Uh, an imaginary line drawn around them, and then things that have evolved. So I think you have, I, I think that's Orange County, a new town called uh, Palm Tree. And and so that would be in the mix as well. So different things. So uh, let me let me go ahead and go into this. This is, um, I came here up here on the upper left, data.census.gov. That's all you have to type in. Um, I'm going to go right to advanced search and, and I may show you another way to get here, but you can, it's just data.census.gov up in your URL. And when you get here, you sort of look over here on the left and you say, well, what am I looking at? Remember I said I went to advanced search 
And the first thing I tell you is go for your year. Okay, narrow it down by year. Now, we're working on something because we put in 2022 and 2021, but it hasn't even, we haven't seen the, the backside of that yet. So 2019 is what you're really going to be able to get data for, okay? And then you can come here, you can do different things. You can look for topics and I'll just show you what that looks like. If you wanted to kind of go looking for things, notice something got blanked out here. And so what that means is for 2019, whatever that is, it is not available. We can go to surveys and surveys is a little bit more than survey. So surveys, ACS, but it's also um, what it is. Is it a one year or is it five year? Is it an estimate? Um, is it data? profile and, and that's what I'm going to be looking for. If I had not checked off my year, okay, it will have everything in here and down here, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. If you can barely see it, it says DEC, that means decennial. That is where you would find um, that block information. You're going to find your public law redistricting data when you need it. So it will be down there. Let me just uncheck the year. Okay, so I've unchecked it surveys. And I, I think this is something that you all may need to know. But as we go down, this is all ACS, right? And then we have, um, this is a business survey here. So we have other surveys in here, but th here's the biggie. All this decennial stuff is right here. And so that is there. You just need to make sure you check off the right year and it will it will stay in your, your, um, in your mix there, right? So all sorts of things from decennial if you wanted to go looking for that. But once again, I'll go back to the year. I want 2019. I'm going to go to survey ACS. And I did talk about the um, uh, data profile and I will tell you, I'm going to tell you right now. So we have one year data up here, but I, I almost instantly, almost always, I go for the five year data. And the reasoning is if I go for one year data and then I suddenly say, I want all, um, counties in New York State, and I want information about those. And I have a county in there, for example, Livingston County, I think maybe under 65,000 people, it won't show up in, in the um, table because it doesn't have enough people. So if I choose the five-year data, I will always get something. So I, I choose the five-year data. And then once I've done that, notice down here, let me get rid of this. We have our selected filter chips, as we call them, like potato chips. So we have 2019 and five-year estimates is down here. And then once I do that, I can come over here to the right. And I don't know if you can see that search button, but I click on, I click on that. And so it's sort of giving me now um, you know, options to look at. And so basically I am getting these items over here. So we're getting the DPO2, I'm getting something for Puerto Rico. Oh, I know, I didn't select my geography lab yet, I'm sorry. So if you get this far and you think you needed to add, add another filter, just click on the word filter and it will bring you back. And so let's do geographies, right? And let's go to um, county and we're going to take all the counties in New York State. Okay, so we have New York State and all counties right here. And this thing kind of goes across and then it, I say done on the upper right. And so now it has whittled it down for me. And I now have these four tables. I have that DPO5 and well, let me just click on that because I didn't really show that on the slideshow. And this is sort of the information you have and notice we have Albany County, right? But this is a table that is going across and it is every county in the state, okay? And so when you get here, this is sort of what the, the table looks like. But I like to say at this point, you're really window shopping, okay? So I like, just remember window shopping, okay? So we're window shopping and this is our street and maybe over here, these are the other things we may want to, to buy instead of this table. But so look at this, I can switch like this really quickly and say, okay, I want the social characteristics and it will bring that up for this, for all those counties in New York state, or I can go to economic or housing or whatever I want to look at. So once I've done that, if I decide this is really what 
I want and I am done window shopping, I come here to the upper right and I click on customize table. And once I customize the table, I, I have a little bit of um, flexibility. I, first of all, I can control this on the screen a little bit if I want to. If I want to pull it in, look at things. Um, I can also, some people don't want to see these margins of error, but let me just show you that before I get rid of them. So if we scroll down here and right here, I have a number 65 years and over household or living alone. So it's 5,459 people. It, and the margin of error means 354. That's what that says on either side of that 5,459. It could be any fall anywhere in there. Um, so it is, you know, telling you that it might be a little bit off. Um, what we do like to say is if you start to see a margin of error that's higher or almost as high as your estimate, probably not, you probably be really skeptical of that number. Okay. I like to use the percentages. I just find it's just easier. You don't have to really think about too much this number. And I, I, I just prefer percentages to tell you the truth. So um, coming up here, I can turn off my margin of error and many people like to do that. And so now I, I have this table. And if I have, so many people have two monitors nowadays. And if you had um, Excel open in another window and you this is all you want, you can just sort of grab it like that, right click, copy and paste it into your Excel and away you go. You, if this is also a table that you like, you can come up here and you can highlight your URL and you can right click the URL and you can copy that and you can paste it into a document or, or an email or whatever. And whoever clicks on that URL link, this table will open for them. So that could be quite useful if you get a, um, a client who comes in and they're looking for a certain thing and they don't know how to do it and you need to find it for them and, and you do find it for them, you can just give them the URL link and they can open this, okay? A um, Couple other things, you can download it into uh, Excel if you need to and you can download it in, uh, sorry, you can bring it directly into Excel if you wanted to go that route. And my understanding is that if you have manipulated the table here, for example, you have um, uh, blanked out the margins of error, whatever you see here is what it will bring into Excel. You have another option over here, the download, and I'll just click on that download. You, you're going to bring it into CSV, right? Slightly different. And so when you do that into CSV, um, it, it, anything you have manipulated on the screen, it, it's not going to do that. It's just going to give you the original table. And so you, you won't have quite so much control, but, but if you have any students or anybody who's working with geographic information, they need to go for that download because that's the place where it has those what we call geo ID numbers that they need to do their mapping. So over here on the right, by the way, we have this thing. If you can see that, it says columns. And you can come in here and you can kind of, I don't find it so user friendly, but you can manipulate the table a little bit if you decide you don't want percentages in some, certain counties or maybe you, you don't even uh, want a county and you get rid of Albany County, you can turn it off and it's not there. So you can manipulate it a little bit over here into columns and get rid of things and add things. Um, and then just click back on columns here and it, it comes back to your table. So this is, this is what the basic table looks like, okay? And if I need to get out of this, uh, I can do a couple things. So sometimes I like to um, go sort of a back door method where I sort of back up, right? And so I come over here, uh, I think it's up here on the left, and I go to tables, and it brings me back to window shopping. So you can certainly do that. And then sometimes I back up to filter up here, and then it brings me back to where I started. And so maybe I, I'm looking for this information, but I no longer want all counties in New York and then I change my filter, okay? And I start looking for something different and I could come here to geography and I think somebody said something about villages. And so a village 
anything that's incorporated villages and those census designated places are what we call a place at the Census Bureau. And you have to let it know uh, what state, right, that you're in, New York. And then it has everything over here, it comes up, right? And you could look here for a, a, an incorporated village or something that maybe looks like it should be incorporated but never did. So I'm, um, and you can come up here to the right, there's a little um, magnifying glass. So I think there's a place called Victor, New York. I know that place. So you can come here and here we have Victor Village and Vic I don't know why it's in there twice, but I always take the first. So there's Victor Village, right? And I'm going to click on done and click close right there. And so here it is, Victor Village, right? And we could be looking at Demo the DPO5 and it really selects it for you, believing that this is what you what you what most people would want. Okay, the first thing. So notice total population of Victor, 2,716 people, okay? And that is below our 5,000, um, what we consider the 5,000 mark that we need, but it, it's okay, it's still going to have data in there. And so we can look at this table, customize the table. We can put turn back on those margins of error. And so we can look to see, does that look acceptable as a margin of error? And so um, in my view, uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good margin of error for that, that lower population. So probably, you know, probably everybody did the census or the ACS and there was no trouble. So you have this information, but you can really, um, there will be some information and some dropout, even if you go down to like very small villages, it will be there. And so you can look for village information as well. The, the drawback to this, okay, village information is that it's listed for the whole state and, and not by county, because certainly some villages are half in one, county or half in one, um, they're in one, t half in one town and half in another town. And so that leads to some problems. And, and so you have to look through the whole state to find those. So I'm going to back out again, and I go back to tables, and I'm going to go back to filters. And so I can do that, right? I can certainly sort of keep going backwards, but I can also come up here to the logo on the upper left, and I can click on it and it just it just erases everything. It's all blanked out now and we have to sort of start all over at advanced search, okay? And sometimes it leaves sort of some traces of things, but let's go to year, just to show you another, once again, how to do this, 2019, right? And I won't, I'll leave the surveys, I won't even, well, I'll go to geography, Okay, and so we'll go that route instead, geography. And so let's say we're looking for, um, I don't know, Niagara Falls. So I put that in, there it is, Niagara Falls, it's a city. Okay, I put that information in there. And so generally we were looking at different, um, a survey, but you can come here and go to topics and you can look for things, okay? So here we have different sorts of topics and you can go this route if you wanted to. So, um, you know, let's let's look at health or income and poverty. Maybe that's a, interesting. So we can click on that. And then down here at the lower right, I say search. And so what this does is sort of brings me to this window shopping uh, area. And remember I, I put in the year um, and I did choose Niagara Falls, but it's giving me a lot of stuff going back. So we, you know, it's trying to give you the, the best thing. It's trying to match it for you. So just click on the top one to, to get it going. And so these are, this is a table that it believes you probably would be interested in. So this is table S1701, it is poverty status in the past 12 months, right? Niagara Falls. And notice sometimes the information is not always on the left. It could be on the on the top. So we have the total and then below the poverty level is in that table and then percent below the poverty level. And so this is begin, becoming very specific here um, and it's breaking things out by age and sex and race. 
you know, and so I do like to tell people, and are they employed, their work experience, that sort of thing goes on and on, right? And I do like to tell you, if you find a table and you say, that is a table for me, please write down the table ID. Okay, just pull out a post-it and write it there. And because you probably are going to need to come back to this and you may never find it. So that is um, something you can do. You can customize a table, can fool around with it, or you can come over here and window shop a little bit and say, okay, well, wait a minute. That's the first table. Well, let's see, is there something better here that I may want to look at? So notice 1701, 1702, 1703, they're all somewhat related, those tables, right? And then we have other tables that probably have poverty information in them, but that isn't the main, necessarily the main topic. But let me just show you S1901. Oh, while that's, so, oh, while that's yeah. loading, there's a, an American fact finder question. I know <laughs> your favorite said okay. that they, that used to compare um, a ge geographic region to the U.S. average or even, is that possible in the new site and then or even comparing two cities counties etc like you yeah know, some that, of the, hey some that's of the... a uh, you know what that's a great question um so let me go back to filter and i'm here and i have one geography loaded and i can go and you know what you can add another geography i don't know why it does this to me it always um so let me see if i see it over here if i can get there it sort of covers up the oh here there we go okay that answers that okay you can come here to nation and we'll put in the united states right and we can put in state okay and so we were looking at uh, we're new york state there it is and so we put that in there and i say done and so now i have the whole thing right i have and uh, i can open the table I'll just get rid of the margin of error. It just makes it a little easier to look at. I can pull this in if I need to, and then I'll pull this in a little bit too. Yes, so that that was a great, that's a great question. Um, and something I often, you know, I forget to show people that. So we have the United States, if you want to compare um, the percentage, and then New York, and then Niagara Falls. And actually, let's, let's look at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Population for whom poverty status is determined, 28%. And if we come over here to New York, it's 14.1%. And if we come to the whole United States, 13.4%. So yes, you can do that. Um, that could be potentially useful um, for people. So um, yeah, is there anything anybody wants to look up while I'm here, maybe? Oh, well, someone has a, a follow a similar question. Um, mm -hmm. Can the table be customized to include only the total poverty calculation of the city, town, et cetera, without the broken down data? So Lisa, you mean the overall um, poverty rate, not by age or gender, or that sort of thing? Yeah. I think that's yes, what she's asking. Can. Yeah, so you're gonna, going to come here to the right, it says columns. And you're, you're going to come here and you would probably just turn every, uh, I think that's how you, I've just turned everything off. So if you just want the total uh, right there for the United States, right? And maybe below the poverty line, maybe just that one. And then you come down here and this sort of a funny way to do it, but you can come here to New York and you can say, okay, I just need blah, blah, blah. I think we can turn this off. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Oh, and then, they're, and then they're saying, can, um, someone asked, so if you get to the point where you want to look up something specific, can you customize the search to cover the capital district or some region like that? So like, that would be, you know, Albany, Schenectady, Troy, and the towns in between. Um, yes. Okay. So I, I, I'm going to tell you to, to manipulate the table, you come over here to the right to columns, or cells okay. and columns, and then you can also do this. You can blah, 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 transpose. And then you can come over here and you can manipulate the table if you wanna do that. So I won't really go into that, but it is there. Um, and, and so you could do that before you download it into Excel, okay? So th that other question was um, about finding specific geographies. I think, can you manipulate the table or do other things? 
Um, let me see if I understand the question. Okay, so I'm going to, um, like I say, I sort of back out of this sometimes. I go back to tables and I go back to filters. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of Niagara Falls. I'm going to get rid of New York, United States, and I will add um, maybe one, a place. Okay, and so what we just said, I guess Albany County would be. Well, I guess that's the, I, um... The issue is like we're a region, so let's say the Finger Lakes is a region, yeah. or Capital District is a region, but it's not. Yeah, it's not probably not a census-defined region is the problem. That's so, right. Yeah, That's and I'm right. sorry. I thought she was asking a follow-up till I read it. But. That's okay. That's okay. So notice what I did as I picked a geography. Um, I said, uh, uh, actually, I'm not going to do place. I've talked about. Um, what I do recommend sometimes is this thing called county subdivision. Sometimes I have to really hunt for these things. I'm sorry. So let me see if anybody sees it. If anybody sees it before me. I saw I just should... plain division above Here it that. Is. Here it is. Oh, county right there. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So county subdivision, we will go to. So I'm going to trick the system a little bit. New York, Albany County, and I will just pick Albany City. Okay, and I will say done. Okay, so here is a table for Albany, uh, Albany City within Albany County. I say customize the table. And then I click on this little button that says map. And it will bring me to Albany City within the capital district, right? And you can use your, you need to have a, um, a mouse with a little rolly thing on it. I don't know what that's the official word for that, but so you can scroll in and you can scroll out of this map. And now what you can do is you can select. So there is no deselect tool. So I'm just telling you it could, but you can draw a square and you can start selecting your area of interest. So maybe is capital district partially east of the Hudson River? Yes, so I, Rensselaer yeah. County. I mean, it, that that's another question. So I get it. There's a debate over what it includes. Like we go, we're Capital District Library Council, and we go all the way to Fulton and Montgomery County. But I don't think anyone else calls it that. So this is a good tool because you can make your own definition of can, Capital you District. Own, <laughs> you can. You can make your own definition, and once you've you've chosen what you want, you come back to table, right? And it, I find sometimes it takes a little while to populate, but there it is. It, it found everything for me, right? And then I'm going to come back over here and just kind of whatever. We were working in poverty, and I think that was in my chip I need to click on. So I clicked on that. I click on the table. And it's, oh, okay, maybe it's up here in the upper left. Yeah, here's my table. And while okay, that's so going, this, someone, I think the answer to this is yes, but someone asked, are stats available by school district? Yes, they I are. I saw that. All right. Yeah. So now, if we we don't even have well, I customize it, and then now you have all those geographies you selected, and once you've done that, click on this up here, the URL, right click on the URL, copy it and paste it, right, and then let's say next week you come back into this, right, and it opens this table for you. But you don't need poverty now, but you still need these geographies, right? You now are going to kind of back out of this, right? You're going to go up here to the upper left, tables, go back to filter right here, and then you leave in your geographies, but maybe you don't want income in, in poverty, and you're going to go looking for something else under topics. And so you could do that. You could go to health and say maybe disabilities, and then say done. And now over here, we have all the disability things that are apropos to, I'll just call it my pseudo capital district, um, you know, geography file. So you can, you can do that if you want to. So you can sort of create your own thing. All right. And I, I'm going to, I did promise I would show you something else. I, so I'm going to, I'm hoping everybody kind of got the feel for this, what you can do. And I think we, we are recording this, right? So Yes, we are uh, recording this. And we have um, about 14 minutes left in the um, yeah. time. But I have there are some more general questions. So I, I don't know okay. how much time you have left on your 
um, okay, presentation. Yeah, yeah, I have some time. Yeah, go ahead. You want to ask them now the general questions, or should, should I? Show Whichever other... works for you. <laughs> they're okay. they're about they're more about the decennial census, so oh, sure. I'll probably okay. finish this up first, and then we can get to yeah, those. yeah. So really quickly, um, to this is the main census site. It is not data.census.gov. It's just www.census.gov, and when you come here, you can explore data, right? And we have this thing called Census Academy over here, and when you come to Census Academy. It will have all sorts of, um, excuse me, YouTube um, data gems or sort of YouTube videos that you can look at. Um, and then we have webinars and we do many, uh, maybe three or four uh, every month, I believe, and then some courses we put together and resources and things like that. So that is there for you to use and you can, you can kind of look through and, and find what you need that might help you. I'm going to go back, click on the census logo. And the other thing I want to show you is you come here, um, surveys and programs, American Community Survey. So that's what we just talked about. You can certainly Google this. You can just put in, you know, Census Bureau, American Community Survey, and it will bring you here. But over here, we have, there's a lot of information in here about it, what the, the forms look like, and there's a video. But the thing I want to bring your attention to is data over here on the left. And when you come to data, you can go here to get your data profiles and you can kind of set it up this way. And so if you you know the state, the county or the place, but notice there's no town, township or town thing in here, you can't do that. But you can do place, meaning village or CDP or metropolitan area. You can go looking for the data this way and it will open it up for you in data.census.gov. Okay. Um, but narrative profile is a different thing. And I, I really want to draw your attention to this. So if somebody comes into you and they need information about a county or a place, but notice we do not have what we call minor civil divisions or um, towns or townships in here is a better way to say it. That's not here. The government doesn't acknowledge those easily, I will say. You can always look up a zip code if you want to, but right here, place, we'll just come right back here and we will select a state. And so this is a really good thing. Um, I, I, for some reason, I keep forgetting the state that I'm, <laughs> I'm in today. Um, so here we are, we have all these places in New York State and you can just sort of scroll through and find something if you want to. But we had looked at, I think, uh, Victor before, so I will select it. And then I say, get the narrative. And so this is another way to look at data. And so it takes about 30 seconds to populate. And many people, this is the other side of their brain, okay? And this is how they, they like to read it. They like to look at things like this. And so this is something you can sort of, I believe you can right click and you can, you can print and you will get all this information. Number of households and it comes up like this. Nativity, where are people born? If you need to see a little bit more, you can click on the data thing over here and it will give you those percentages that way. Language, education, disability, there's some information, employment status, industries that people work in in that town, um, occupation, commuting to work. Wow, Victor, 78% of the people are in car, truck, whatever, going to work. The income, so that's in there too, medium income, uh, all sorts of things here. Uh, the sort of population thing, if you wanna look at that, I don't know the official terminology for this sort of schematic. So, and then I think at the very bottom, computer and internet usage, if you needed to analyze that a little bit. And so it's telling you what people have in their households. And so that is a narrative profile uh, a different, oh, and here we have internet subscriptions. Another way for people to to analyze things and think about that. And so my, uh, my colleague isn't here today, but she's in Manhattan, she only does Manhattan. But she said, you know, you can just go into Google and say ACS narrative profile, and it will bring you to this page, okay? And you can, you can work in here, you can fool around with it a little bit if you want to and, and get that kind of information. So this is just a great thing to use if, if you need it. And it's ACS data. So, okay. So 
Uh, Susan, were there some extra questions that are there? Uh, yes. Um, one was a more specific follow up on the question from early in the webinar about the uh, attach one unit attach it says our planner used ACS for housing data in our villages comprehensive plan. I looked mm -hmm. up on the census info to see why to see why it did not make sense to me and saw the one unit attached category I cannot I have not been able to find out how one unit can be attached. One census person I asked that it depends on where the front door is located. So I don't know if this is might be something to dig ask a, a census. Um, specialist. Yeah, I, yeah I, I actually don't know the answer to that, but I would say this um, American Community Survey site back to tables is the place to go to look that okay. up. Okay, so that this is um, probably down here somewhere in the uh, technical documentation or uh, guidance. No, I don't think the guidance would go, but it's probably in here somewhere. You know, sample size and data content tests and questionnaire. You know, sometimes I find the answers by looking at the questionnaire too. I go back and I look at that, but here, I think- Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Here. Yeah, you know what? I, one thing I did not show you, I, I apologize, data, I said data tables and tools narrative. There was something here. Oh, I'm sorry, subject tables is right here. So that is something, let me find it here on the left. I forgot to show you this. Subject tables, these are all the different um, tables that there are, those, those sort of micro uh, data tables where you really get down to it. So, and up here in the upper right, you can just type in something like that and it will, it will sort of show you what's going on. And if you click on one of these, it will open the table for you in data.census.gov. Oh, there we go. Here it is. Units and structure, one, oh, oh, one attached and one detached. Oh, okay, well, that kind of makes sense to me. I mean, maybe like um, unit uh, could be a, a garage or something like that or attached, I guess, in general, everything's attached, I guess, but it does say one detached. My garage is Jeez. not attached, so I don't know. Um, yeah, mine is not either. Yeah, yeah so but um, I'm not, you know what? I don't know. Okay. It seems like well, most that's, of it that's, is more detached. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a few more questions. So that's a specific one. Maybe I'll explore mm -hmm. it later and get back to her. Um, mm -hmm. It said, what, what has happened or will happen with the statistical abstract of the United States? It seems to be reduced uh, in what it puts in. Are you familiar with what goes in there? Oh. Uh, do you have a, a website you go to? Because I think the last time those statistical abstracts were put up for 2012. Is that correct? Maybe somebody can answer that. And then I always understood that the American American Fact Finder was the replacement. And so now this is the replacement for American Fact Finder. Okay. So I, so, so, I, I so basically this way. overrides what was in the statistical abstract. Yeah. Um, and here's the, some questions about the decennial census. Um, is the census addressing the gender alternatives pro, uh, problem no. and or have there been people, more people not filling out the male female question? I, I don't know the answer to that, but I do not. All right, let me just see here. I, I don't think we. Well, I, I this next last question, I know you know the answer to because I heard you an answer it um, at a previous program. Uh, person says, I would appreciate any information you had about how the 2020 census went, uh, wh what adjustments due to COVID, um, and has the census had to deal with anything similar? Yeah. So, how the okay, census so went. A, and a, Yeah, that's a pretty. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that's a pretty common question. And um, so the, actually this is the, the form and I, I do not think, I'm going back to that, uh, what was it, gender question? Yeah, the I, gender. I'm not really sure that we asked. We just, yeah, yeah it's just male, female. We, There's, and uh, yeah, that might be for the uh, next, yeah. the 2030 census, right? <laughs> you. Now, now, 
or it, it may get inserted into the ACS, which has more flexibility. And so they we could conceivably start collecting that information in ACS, who knows? Okay, so how did the census go? Um, because of COVID, that was the question, right? This over the past year. So in some respects, it, it, it there were a lot of, I, I don't want to say pluses, but some things did work out really well for the Census Bureau because people could now do it online. They had more time, people were at home. And so they were actually responding uh, much more robustly than we anticipated. And so I think that really helped. Um, and also what we did do is we kept doing these pushes and saying, you can still do it online, you can still do it online. And it would come in, it would kept bringing up the numbers and bringing up the numbers. I think actually higher, the response rate I think may have been higher are, are pretty much the same as it had been in previous years. But I, I have a suspicion it was higher. And um, then what we did following that is we did have to go out and do our, our follow up and our door knocking. But I think that, you know, we are required and we are um, kind of flexible and we have we have to go to every every housing unit and follow up on that. And so we did use some administrative records, in my understanding, to help fill in some of the gaps. I do want to point out with that that ten year census, the ultimate goal is simply a head count. And so all those other little things that are in there, the race or the age and the sex, those are sort of playing second fiddle to the head count, the the counting of a housing unit and the counting of the number of heads in that housing unit. And so that is something that we we were sort of shooting for. And I think uh, my understanding is that it, it seems like um, things actually went pretty well, um, you know, better than I think we may have ant anticipated. The um, downside may be for places like New York City or large cities that people left cities, okay? Maybe they left the cities and they went to live with their parents or something in Vermont or whatever, um, who knows what, but um, that may have brought down the population of some cities, although there was a component in there when you answer the census that said, do you have another address? And when you say you have another, another address, says, what is that other address? Would you normally be there on April 1st? And if you were, it sort of like forces you to be counted at that address. So we don't really know what the numbers are going to be, but we will see, you know, uh, after the end of September. So. Great, thank you. That's good news. I know the librarians are very thrilled to hear that the, uh, the census went well. Um, so you've provided your email address and uh, we will be, we have recorded this and um, we will be getting it. I'll send out a note uh, once the re recording is live. Um, for those of you who've requested a, um, a certificate, those will be going out next week. And um, we have one more minute. If anyone has a last minute question, you can put it in. Otherwise, I'll thank David and I know that you have more, uh, the, there's other programs that are on the website that you pointed to before. And I know you've just yeah. whetted our appetite for those um, to explore this more. And I see lots of comments in the chat saying that it was very helpful. So thank you so much, David. And uh, okay. we will Good. see you again soon in the future. Okay, or I'll be hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I will. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, people did have very specific questions so now they know where to find you. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's true. So okay, thank you. Okay. And um, anyone I'll just hang around for a minute. Okay, okay. great. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. And um, anyone can go to our cdlc.org and go to our calendar to see the many, many uh, upcoming continuing education events that CDLC and our sister councils are hosting in the next months and month, months and weeks to come. But David's around if anyone and I can, um, if anyone's hanging around, if they want to put it in the chat, or I can even unmute you at this point. But I'm going to end the uh, I'm going to end the recording.